You know, the other day I went out to do an estimate and I came to the sudden realization that my battery had died on my cell phone. And without my cell phone, I didn't have the GPS mapping technology that I use every day to find the locations of where I'm going. And it got me to thinking, I said, my God, I don't even have a map with me. So I started looking around and I thought, do I have to go find a gas station where I can buy a paper map and find my way around? And it, it was just kind of frustrating how dependent I have realized that I have become on technology. And you know, technology fails. It'll always fail. If you've got a hard disk or something, it's gonna fail. If you've got a camera, the battery's gonna die. You're gonna lose something. Digital technology is wonderful, but it's also subject to failure. So, always have a backup. Always have another way of doing things. And I'm gonna to get to the tree work part of this, but let's talk a little bit about maps. You know, a few years ago, before cell phones and mapping technology were so prevalent, I came up with an idea that I was sure was going to make a lot of money. It was a simple invention. Well, let me show you. I'll, let's, let's go into the shop and I'll show you. A map. You guys remember maps? I know it's kind of a silly question, but with smartphones and technology and GPS and everything these days, nobody seems to use these anymore. And this was my primary way of getting around, the Thomas Guide. It was a book and you'd look up the street and it would give you the page and give you the correlating uh, way of finding the, the street and it was easy, it was simple, but here was my idea and I used this for a long time. I came up with this little plastic holder that fits this particular map, map book easily and why this is so good is I can open it to the page. Let's see if I can do that right now. Let's pick a page here and I could locate where I'm going, put it all back together, and it fits right back inside here. I'm gonna use two hands to do that. But it fits right inside, it goes inside easily, you can see clearly the map, and because you've got a plastic cover, you can use a dry erase marker on here and route it and see exactly where you are. And if there's two or three bids within the same page, you can number them and show the best way to get around. Now, for me at the time, I thought that was just the most innovative way of finding my way around. And then, damned if the smartphone didn't beat me to it and make it obsolete. And you know what? You can't even find a map book anymore. You can find individual maps, but these map books, which I thought were just wonderful, they are wonderful. And you can see the date on this one. This is the last year I could find a map book, and they don't sell them anymore. Now, well, maybe somebody does, but... I can't seem to find them. Big area I deal with. Lots of lots of streets. The whole Santa Clara County. You know, there's so many cities that I work in. I work in, you know, Saratoga, Las Gatas, Montesorino, Cupertino, San Jose, which is huge. Uh, Sunnyvale, Mountain View, Los Altos, Los Altos Hills. Uh, it, you know, it, it still goes on. Palo Alto. All the, the local small cities that I've got to deal with and the population of the area where I'm, I'm working, you know, it's, it's got to be several million, but it's a, it's a huge complex job just finding my way around. Now I just map it. I call up Siri and say, give me directions to such and such and I hope she gives me the right directions. Technology. Is it good? Is it bad? No, it's a love-hate thing for me. I certainly wouldn't have YouTube without it. All right, there is a moral to this story. Um, the map is just an example of how technology can fail. But in tree work, you know, most of the new climbers now, you're getting so used to all the new gear. You know, and the new gear, I'm not knocking it at all. The new gear is wonderful. You know, the rope runner, the chicane, the, the you know, the uh, zigzag, I mean, there's so many of them now. There's so many devices out there and so many new specialized pulleys. And But you know, for the longest time, us tree guys were pretty, um, <laughs> pretty basic. You know, we used all the knots. We used, uh, you know, some rigging tricks, but you know, it was, it, it was really, um, 
a technology that hadn't evolved for decades. Well, in the last 15 years or so, it has evolved. But the point of my story is don't lose sight of the old way of doing things. You know, if you're a climber, you really should understand at the very least how to tie a Blake's hitch or, or even a taut line hitch. You know, those are, are quick and easy ways to descend out of a tree that, you know, to old time climbers, that, that is the way of getting around. Um, sure, you can get around faster with the new stuff, but new stuff can fail. You know, you can break it, you can lose it. It can get clogged up with, uh, with pine pitch. There's so much that can happen to the mechanics of some of the new tools that if you get into a situation where you're in trouble and you don't understand the old ways of doing things, uh, you might end up with a real embarrassing moment where somebody's gonna have to rescue you. So I, uh, I implore you, you know, if you're a, a new climber, uh, don't get stuck in just the old, the new technology. Learn the old ways as well. You know, really understand, you know, where this industry came from and how it evolved. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate everybody that that comments. Um, hit the like button. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed, and uh, hit that little bell over there, and that'll tell you when the next video is coming up. And uh, once again, stay safe out there.